Ever since getting hooked on the Ricoh GR, I've been excited about the idea of a 50 millimeter equivalent version. And that's pretty much exactly what this camera is, a 50 millimeter equivalent APS-C Ricoh GR. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Snappinist YouTube channel. This is my fourth video sharing the unique Ricoh GXR camera system with you. And today I have the 12 megapixel APS-C 50 millimeter F2.5 macro module. It was available in 2010 on the launch of the camera system alongside the small sensor S10 zoom module, which I covered in an earlier video. And personally, alongside the in-mount module, I was most excited about picking up this module and living out my 50 millimeter equivalent Ricoh GR dreams. And I say 50 millimeter because that's what it is after the APS-C crop factor conversion, but really it's a 33 millimeter lens. And I think this distinction is important to remember as you're taking the photos, and I'll touch on that more in a minute. As hinted, the whole package is quite small, making it about the size of an equivalent Micro Four Thirds setup. It's coat pocketable, but not pants pocketable. It does not have a retractable lens design, but the lens does bob a little bit when turned on, and it extends quite far when macro mode is turned on. That macro mode allows you to get as close as seven centimeters and get up to 0.5 X magnification, which is really quite admirable considering the sensor and overall size of the module. Now, is this A12 50 millimeter macro module the Ricoh GR 50 millimeter of my dreams? Well, yes and no, but mostly no. Let me start with the positives first. The lens is indeed optically very good, up to Ricoh's best standards. It's sharp, has nice contrast even against bright lights, and the colors with the lens and sensor are very nice. The sensor puts out some nice images, and for general photography application, you should not have a problem here. It does struggle with higher ISOs and if you push the files too much, but this is 2010 after all, so it's understandable. The lens's max aperture of f2.5 performs very well, even wide open. It did make me wonder why it couldn't be a tad faster, considering it wasn't under the same constraints as the retractable lens pocket GRs and full frame fast 50s are so small as is. In any case, f2.5 is fast enough for most applications. If you're hoping to get background blur, you absolutely can, even stepped back thanks to that large APS-C sensor. Closer up shots show very nice separation and I think pleasing looking bokeh, but you can be the judge of my pictures. Because it's really a 33 millimeter lens, it does act very different than the 50 millimeter name implies. And that goes for portraits especially. Not only will you get less background blur, but you wanna pay attention to how it renders your subjects, especially their face. 33 millimeters isn't ultra wide, but it is on the wider side of things. For most things though, I found the 33 millimeter lens advantageous. While you're getting a 50 millimeter equivalent crop, your depth of field will help you keep subjects sharp and appear in focus even wide open more than a 50 millimeter on full frame would, if that makes sense. Since I shoot in the mornings a lot on my bike rides, I leave it wide open most of the time, and I like that I can get more things in focus. This also affects how your close-up shots look, and I personally am a fan of the wide angle close-up shots. So this works for me here too. Now for my biggest and perhaps really only negative of the module, and there really is only one, and that is the autofocus. The autofocus on this module is both slow and unreliable. It's much too slow to keep up with my kids, and this is coming from a person who photographs his children on both manual lenses on film and Pentax digital cameras. So thinking this is slow should really tell you something. Even thinking of it as a still life camera, the autofocus will often hunt even in moderately low light conditions. When it does lock on, it'll often be incorrect. 
I shoot it almost entirely in the center single point autofocus and even that struggles a bunch. Now the lens and camera do offer a manual focus mode with focus peaking. You can change the focus by rotating the electronically controlled ring on the lens. This is a very slow method and it takes several rotations to move from one end to the other, but it does help with your accuracy, especially in the macro mode. If you wanted to shoot action or street photography with this camera, which I don't really recommend, but if you did, then I recommend doing what I did and keep the camera in manual focus or using the snap focus mode. Then you can pre-select the focus point and use a narrow aperture and get a large area in focus. Doing this makes the camera fire instantly when you press the shutter. While I'm in love with the Ricoh GXR controls, the 50mm equivalent field of view, and the image quality, the autofocus holds it back from being a great 50mm Ricoh GR experience for me. However, out of all the Ricoh GXR modules, I do think it's one of the more interesting and desirable, and it's worth looking into for one of the most compact APS-C setups you can get. Thanks for watching. Check out my other Ricoh GXR videos if you haven't already. Subscribe if you want to see a future video on my poor man's Ricoh GR3X. Spoiler alert, it is remarkably good. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy snapping.